Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Omar. <clears throat> I'm here today with you uh, after this uh, great bomb explosion that just happened in Lebanon. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my mind is divided. Should I talk about that or should I talk about your books or should I just let you <laughs> say uh, what you want to say? Uh, well, part just, just, what, just. Uh, what is our priority? How do we, you know. Your priority is what's under your right hand. Mm. That's your priority. And uh, that has to be dedicated to the cause of Allah. All else uh, is unimportant, except that we must to be, uh, and the, the Prophet made this clear, I think Quran makes it clear too, we should be aware of current events and how they're going to affect what's under our right hand. So in, in brief, that's my answer to this introductory okay. question. Um, I, I think that's, uh, that should su suffice. Um, as for what's going on in Lebanon, God knows, uh, we certainly don't. We have bits and pieces uh, of ideas here and there, mm, and okay. and we know we know who the usual <coughs> the usual. I'm going to I was going to say usual suspects. Yeah, that's but what they're I not. They're not suspects. <laughs> they're bloody <laughs> criminals, and the whole world. Here. They're bloody criminals, and the whole world knows it. And uh, nobody can stop them because they've got everybody blackmailed. I'm pretty certain, based on uh, reasonable assumptions and reasonable conclusions that can be drawn from those assumptions, which are based on historical evidence and facts, uh, that they've got everybody under the planet pretty much under their thumb hmm. by virtue of uh, some sort of threat, by means of some sort of threat, whether it's the typical Jesuit confessional blackmail uh, uh, ploy or an Epstein event or a suitcase nuclear device sitting somewhere in somebody's basement in your major city. Mm. They've had those for uh, 20, 30 years now, distributed all over the world. And they are not, they are not shy of uh, the they would prefer not to, but they're not shy of what they call the Samson option. They'll take everybody oh. down with them, mm. okay, if they have to. So this is the most vicious enemy that mankind has ever um, uh, faced. Not that there haven't been equivalent uh, uh, people with uh, such uh, vulgar uh, ideas, but they're the most organized Right, and they have see. the technology that wasn't... Well, it's not just the technology. They have the willpower mm. to to organize themselves in unity, mm. which uh, this is the... Um, this is the opposite of what the uh, the Muslim Ummah should be uh, demonstrating. You see, this group feeling that uh, dear uh, brother uh, uh, Ibn Khaldun uh, uh, spoke of, uh, when I read about that, I said, yeah, that's it. That's what's missing. And uh, the Ummah has never gotten it back. Well, the Zionists in the British Empire under their thumb, and they're all under the thumb of high degree satanic uh, magi who are using the Zionists as well as the British Empire. They use anybody. They don't, they don't have loyalty to any movement, okay? Mm -hmm. Their loyalty is to the self. Mm. Which is the which is the essence of uh, of uh, Cain's problem, the problem that Kabil uh, uh, surrendered to selfishness, pure mm. selfishness. This is unadulterated selfishness, and they've organized it. They've organized their society based on a false mythology, and uh, these Zionists think that they're worshiping God Almighty. <laughs> And, and they couldn't be further from the truth, but they believe it, you see. Mm. And that is the unifying principle, that they all believe it. So they're brought up with this belief generation after generation after generation. And uh, since the Zionists took over the movement under the auspices of the Illuminati and the world's uh, bankers, uh, who are old, old, old money uh, families. Mm. Uh, some of them are new money, but uh, 
uh, we're talking about uh, pre-flood bloodlines. Mm. Okay, that uh, stretch back to the 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 realms that uh, preceded the flood, and uh, those giants that you hear somebody talking about from mm. time to time. These people still mm. exist. Those spirits still exist, and they still possess people. Mm. And when you're talking about bloodline, you're talking about bloodlines that are literally possessed by Iblis and uh, his demons, his chief demons. <clears throat> and um, this is a kingdom that is very, very, has become very, very well organized because the demons couldn't do it on their own. You see, they were already defeated uh, on several occasions, according to my understanding. But with their human host and with the, the you see, the human host provides them something that they did not have before and uh, since their initial defeat, you see, they, they have a license. They have a license to oppress the Ummah. They have a license to do mm -hmm. what they're doing as long as righteous people don't oppose them. Got you it. You see? Got it. And if righteous people, this is, I'm talking spiritual principles now. Yeah, this is, yeah. you it's know, very, from, I mean, from a Quranic point of view, that's so interesting because the, the surah of the Quran that gives the basic, you know, like a D minus grade. Like if you do this, you're a D minus, right? Anything <laughs> less than this is F. Yeah. Is mm -hmm. uh, known as the loss of the, well, by the, by the fast moving time, every human being is in loss, except for those who believe do good deeds and join one another to truth and join yes. one another to patience. Yes. And the emphasis in the Quran for standing up and, you know, enjoining good and forbidding wrong, um, our concept of it has become perverted in a sense. It's become ritualistic, right? Yes. It's, it's not like, become oh, you actual. should pray this way and you should not pray this way. And you should do, <laughs> you know, it's, it's the rich. We, yeah. we limit the enjoining of the good and forbidding the wrong in the ritualistic sense. And forget about the all the 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 scope of shaitan for the rest of the human beings, <laughs> in, in terms of where it's leading, you know. And so yeah, the umma the umma has been preoccupied with childishness, and um, uh, the enemy, meanwhile, has used his license to uh, become preoccupied with the things of this world in a mature fashion, in a very mature fashion. Mm. Okay, so that they don't waste their time with anything that is not utilitarian. Mm. If it doesn't benefit us, if it doesn't benefit our cause, we don't entertain it. Okay, and so, but we will entertain everything that destroys the cause of Allah. Mm. Okay, so anything that promotes childishness, they will promote it. They will make sure, for example, the Islamization of the uh, knowledge movement has been going on for 70 years. What's come out of it? Mm. <laughs> Nothing. You've got a bunch of globetrotters going around talking, 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 talking. All of this is words. There's nothing substantial coming out of it. Mm. So it's a preoccupation with something that is vain. They're, they're, what they're talking about is vanity, okay? We should do this. We should do that. Da 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 da. It never gets done. Mm. Okay. Uh, my my brother uh, Muhammad Anas uh, uh, Naim and I have been looking for some sort of Islamic finance facility that will allow us to uh, uh, transfer funds uh, in the in, in the event that we need to do so, and we can't do it. We can't mm. find any. And this is after seventy years of. Islamization of knowledge and the Islamic oh, banking. Yeah. Please. The Jews are laughing. Iblis is laughing. Look at those fools. <laughs> Look at them. They can't even establish decent banking facilities without mm. our permission. Mm. You see? So uh, there's no autonomy. There's no independence from this system. <coughs> and it's because the Ummah has lost their Siasia dunia. They, they have mm. lost this group feeling, and that is the that is the responsibility of leadership. Mm. You see, if your leadership is not taking care 
of the cause of Allah under their right hand, if they're not walking about the streets making sure that everybody is fed, you know, see, right. that, yeah. that they're not serving the cause of Allah. Mm. And this group feeling is is just going to pass away. There's no if you don't uphold justice, you see. I'm not talking about prayers. I'm talking about justice. Mm -hmm. Seeing that things are distributed in a just fashion, making sure that the widows and the orphans are not cheated. Mm -hmm. What well, is commonly known as social justice? In <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. So all of this is lacking, but in the in the um, uh, the enemy's camp, they've got everything covered. They've got all the bases covered. They're even distributing social justice after a fashion to the people that they slaughter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is so interesting. When you look at like the Rotary Club or, or these different clubs that oh, these Jesus. Different I mean, they do a lot of good, right? It's like they have this like uh, I guess evil goals, but practically they're doing they're showing the people we're doing a lot of good. Well, they hide behind charity. They hide uh, behind charity, yes. The, the, the wicked person has always hidden behind charity. They've always hidden behind this lie. Wow. And there is a certain, there's a principle that they, they, they follow, which is actually scriptural. They make sure that 10% of what they earn is given to charity. Hmm. Okay, and uh, that allows them a certain amount of legal uh, permission uh, in in metaphysical metaphysical realms that make that assures that they will continue their prosperity. Hmm. See, See, now Muslims don't do this. They make right. a big noise. They make a big noise about it. But when you go to 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 ask them to inquire, where's your ten percent? They say none of your business. Hmm. You see, you're not looking into my accounts. Well, of course, we're not supposed to spy on each other. But let's go back to Kabil and Habil. Hmm. You see, because this is where it all started. This right. is where the great divide took place hmm. amongst the children of Adam. It wow. began right there. So and the sacrifice, yeah. This is it, because. You see, the things that belong to God belong to charity because God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is charity. Hmm. You see? So when Habil was giving of his substance to the people under his right hand and to his neighbors and whatnot, this wasn't just a sacrifice on some altar. Forget those ideas. Hmm. That's just a story. Hmm. Okay. The principle is that of charity. Mm. And Habil gave of his best. Okay. Mm. For example, if I'm I'm talking to you right now and nobody is paying me, okay? You understand? You're not paying me, nobody's paying me, but I am giving you my best. Mm. You see, my very best based on you know the 70 brief years that I've been on the earth and trying to learn. Uh, the, to differentiate, to differentiate right from wrong. Mm. Well, Habil gave his best. Habil did not do his best. He did not give his best. Mm. And the best belongs to Allah. Mm. And if you're wallowing in disunity, in sectarianism, and and you're still fighting after fourteen hundred years, how to bloody pray? You know, this is stupidity. Mm. This is just plain stupid. Yeah, you understand. You can't, and if you're going to entertain that kind of uh, thinking and those kinds of preoccupations, you cannot do your best, mm. and you cannot give it. And you can't. And you, God, you cannot represent the cause of Allah. Of so, Allah. these people, the enemies of the cause of Allah, are giving their very, very best. <laughs> to the cause of Iblis. Mm. Now, which in the balance is going to and, weigh? And, and just to add what you said, a very important mm. point, that they understand the divine significance of giving charity. 
Yes, they do. And so uh, they use the principle of charity for their yes. their evil, let's say. Yes, they, they, they use it. It's a it's a business principle. Okay. Hmm. If you if you talk to uh, for example, if you talk to uh, a a thoroughly orthodox Jew who is not entertaining uh, Zionism, not consciously, subconsciously they do, okay, because they don't really understand what Zion is, what Zion represents. And I'll tell you right now what Zion represents, so make every, everything clear. Zion represents the human heart. Mm. And the... Uh, the Quran makes it clear. I've forgotten what the passage is, but it's clear there. It's also clear in the Old Testament. But they think that Zion is some sort of a fortress that, you know, uh, David used to uh, defend and rule uh, over the kingdom from. No, 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 no. God rules in the human heart. The heart belongs to him. Mm. You see, this is Zion. So when God rules in the heart, that is Zion. Mm. If Iblis rules in the heart, this is not Zion. This is mm. anti-Zion. This is anti fitra mm. Okay. So, but they are using scriptural principles for this anti-Zion uh, cause. Mm. And they use them very well. So that uh, uh, an Orthodox Jew uh, who is not cheating, is not stealing, but is using proper business principles to to c carry on. He will use this principle, okay, of tithing. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he will he will he will go one extra. And if you study the the, the tithing principles that that set up the that were supposed to set up the kingdom of Israel, which is an analogy, it's it's a metaphysical reality that can be brought to earth, and and the prophet did this actually, but we didn't keep it. You see. Muslim didn't keep it. The prophet brought it, but we didn't keep it. Mm. If you study this completely, the the actual monies that belong to the Khalifa for the cause of Allah to meet everything, to 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 um, to govern the state, to meet all the payrolls, to take care of charity, welfare, all these sort of things, uh, is about twenty two percent, something like that. Which is not very much. Yeah. You go to some tax bases right now, they're thirty percent, forty percent, fifty percent. Yeah, you so twenty <laughs> so twenty two percent is 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 not bad. It's and that's a small price to pay for peace and security, asakina, right? Yes. Well Muslims don't want to pay. You know? Look. I'm I'm in uh, I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not begging now, okay? But I'm in need of financial help, okay? Mm. And it's on my website. It's on my website, okay? Please, mm. if you want to help me to publish my my books and my materials and everything, and to spread this uh, this what my, my my perspective on the truth is, please give so and so and such and such and you know. I have thousands upon thousands of visitors come to that site, and nobody, almost nobody gives. Yeah, you see. Whereas this you have is... Wikipedia asking for five dollars, right? <laughs> Every other time you go there, and people are giving. Yes. And so so... Muslims are are uh, you know it's so strange. You know, it's like that's yes, strange. It's yeah, it is because Muslims don't like giving taxes in Muslim countries, and yeah. uh, they it's don't very like giving strange, taxes. Isn't it? You know, very uh, strange. They don't trust. It's it's a it's a and it's a, it's an expression of cynicism. You see, mm. trust is gone. Amana is gone, and cynicism has taken hold. And when cynicism takes hold of the heart, well, you know, Hanum, you're, it's, it's a like, very important point. What you just said. Mm -hmm. that when trust goes, cynicism takes place. Yes, it, it you. you become, it, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's just it. When when you lose the characteristics, and if they're applying the divine principles, even if they're kafir, yeah. they will get the sakina in a sense. Yes, yes. They will yes. have their imana in a sense. That's the result yes. of those spiritual principles. But yes. if we're not applying them, we won't get it. That's correct. That's correct. You know, the angels kind of throw up their hands and say, you know, well, look what this Jew is doing. You know. We got to open the gate for him. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that. 
you see, even though that they, even though they're expressing uh, sentiments that are anti fitra they're still keeping the divine principles. These divine principles are the spiritual laws which I've been talking about. Okay, that Muslims are just ignoring as if they don't exist, as if they don't matter. Mm. You see, and as if this cynicism doesn't mm. matter. You see, it mm. does matter. Mm. Because when your heart is filled with cynicism, there is no guidance. You see, you cannot be guided. You can only be misguided. And so mm. you will you will attend to the affairs of a lying pseudo Sufi sheikh rather than the affairs and the well-being of somebody who's telling you the truth mm. when your heart is filled with the cynicism. Mm. So you will be you will be automatically guided to lies, automatically. You see, I, I see this time and time again. And I will have the uh, website of Dr. Omar Zaid on my description and my uh, comment section. Inshallah, those of you that uh, would like to, uh, you know, give, please do. Even though I'd like to have a special session with Dr. Omar on. Uh, giving for his cause. That would be helpful, but that's not the point here. The point no, 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 is I understand the, that. The no, point I, is the principle I, I'm trying to make here. It make make it very. Thank you. I thank you very much. But the, we we can attend to that later. Let's not get off track here. The principle uh, of amana being tossed out and cynicism reigning in the heart is what is what uh, what I'm talking about here. Now. The, uh, the Zionists also have cynicism, you see. These Jews, they're also mm. filled with the cynicism, but they have a unifying principle that overrides that cynicism. So that when their mm. rabbi speaks, or when the chief rabbi speaks, or when the uh, ruler, uh, somebody, so, let's look at Pompeo. Pompeo is a member of the Sanhedrin, for God's mm. sake. All right. He's not only the Secretary of State, he is a high priest member of the Sanhedrin. Wow. Okay. He's not to be taken lightly. So mm. that when the Jews, they're entertaining all their cynicism, whether in New York or Cairo, wherever, wherever the hell they might be. But when Pompeo speaks, everybody listens. Mm. Okay. Where is the high priest leading us now? All right, because they move in unison. Mm. You see, they move in unison. So that when, but Muslims don't do this. Muslims panic in unison. Mm. <laughs> There's a difference. It's a matter of willpower. It's a matter of applied willpower. Mm. And the willpower that is being applied by the uh, Zionists and the, the, the neocons who support them Christians and uh, otherwise, uh, this is something that is that um, conforms to what we call confirmational bias. Mm. So that anything that counters their goal orientation, they just ignore. So when the the sophist speaks, like Pompeo, okay, this is he's he's an actor. He's a, he's an elder, he's a very good actor. He's a powerful man. But nevertheless, he's an actor. He has a role to play. And if he says, we're doing this, we're going in that direction, and it may counter everything that's ethical and moral, but all of those people who support the British Commonwealth, which is Israelitism, okay, and all of those people who support this Zionist uh, principle, they will move with it. Mm. They will move with it. And it doesn't matter how many Palestinians are killed. It doesn't matter how many innocents are offered to Moloch on this particular block mm. or altar. It doesn't matter. Mm. All that matters to them is their goal or orientation. And their goal orientation is the incarnation of their Messiah, who is going to be Antichrist. Mm. But they don't realize that. And, so, and those who do are not sufficiently organized to oppose them. You see, that's how it is. That's mm. the reality. And because this is the reality, this is why Isa has to come back and destroy them. Because right. nobody else can do it. 
Right. Nobody else is appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do it. It's his mm. job. Mm. Now, we discussed this last time, I think. Yes. Uh, the, the we divine, were uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's the divine cause. Now, 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 the Jews who are listening to us right now, on this neocon, they they think we're nuts, okay? Because they don't they don't hang on to revealed knowledge. Oh no 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 this, don't, don't. This, mm. <coughs> this is very this is very important this principle, uh, so that people can understand what's actually taking place here psychologically, and mm. uh, uh, the, this is a result of uh, neurological patterning, which then becomes a sociological reality over two or three generations, which is why the Quran uh, re refers to uh, this phenomena uh, and, uh, and says that the people are just going to say, well, we were just doing what our fathers did, you see. Mm. And uh, that's no excuse because it means you've stopped thinking. Mm. Now, I'm going to tell you why people stop thinking. And I'll give you a perfect example. I've forgotten the young man's name, but he's a member of the New Orleans Saints, professional football player. He just mm. stood up a few days ago at game time or halftime or whatever it is. And he said, I will always stand for the flag. Mm. Okay. Now, I don't know if you saw that, but this is very typical of confirmation bias. It doesn't matter what his country does. It doesn't matter how corrupt his leaders are. He will always stand for the flag. Now, let me translate that for you. It means that his loyalty is attached to the flag. Mm. It's not attached to God. It's not even attached to the loyal, to, to, the, to the leaders of his country. It's attached to the flag. And mm. that flag is some sort of abstract, well, what is it? It's a piece of rag on a stick. That's what it is. <laughs> Okay, let's get real here, people. It's a piece of rag on a stick, and his heart is loyal to that thing. And whatever he's been taught, it represents. And if you were to ask him to define what it represents, he won't be able to give you a scientific explanation. Because his attachment to that flag is purely based on feelings, emotionalism. Mm -hmm. OK, mm. and this is the basis for confirmation bias. Mm. People stop thinking and they just run like the mob I was talking about last week. They run, you know, you put that rag out there. They're like a bunch of greyhounds at the racetrack. Yeah. OK, and this is the same thing that happens with the star and the crescent for the last 500 years. That's the right. Ottomans, the Ottoman magi did this on purpose hmm. okay this was not a this was not an accident this was not some sort of gracious uh, 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 gesture uh, that was supposed to you know favor god almighty no this was a sigil hmm. it was a sigil that was used by iblis to brand the ummah and to misguide them hmm. OK, so that they, wherever they see the star in the crescent now, they will run like a mob. Okay? Right. Uh, it doesn't matter that the that the uh, uh, that the leader of that particular mosque, when he calls out the Azan, it doesn't matter. He sounds like a sick, dying dog. Mm. Doesn't yeah. matter. And it doesn't matter that Allah is the Lord of beauty. And then when we see it on our flags from the mosque moving into our flags, and then who knows where it'll go after that. Yes, and uh, and then we just follow. We just follow. You follow like a bunch of stupid rats, mm. right? And you jump off the cliff like lemmings. That's what's taking place. And the Quran says you're going to do this. You're going to go. You're going to jump into the hole just like the Christians and the Jews, just like them. And when I say that. And this is what I'm going back to the opening statement here. Uh, I said something to the effect that, the, you know, the, the leaders, the Satanists, they don't care about Jewry or Christians or Muslims. They don't care. They're selfish. Hmm. They only care about themselves. And they're actually, they actually think that Iblis cares about them. <laughs> He's really got them <laughs> fooled. Hmm. So Iblis has taken this group. <coughs> of selfish people 
who are given over to serving the id, the serving the nafs, rather than serving the cause of Allah. And then he, you know, there's, oh, there, there, there's your flag, you see, there it is. Come on, mm. come on, come on. This is the principle of magic. Mm. This is the principle of magic. And wow. it's the highest form of magic. Wow. Polit this, this approach to political science is the highest form of magic. To mm. get an entire nation to follow a flag, that's magic, mm. you see. And uh, so I hope I've made that clear. Yes. <laughs> so uh, now you understand uh, one of the differences between the Jews and the Ummah. The Jews and the, uh, the, the, the Western intellectuals who are following their flag, okay? And that's why the, the, you know, the, the Quran even talks about these flags. He said, you know, this flag, 70 flags, whatever they are, okay? They're flags. These are sigils. They're used to misguide the people. Mm. And uh, the, they use them to, I just lost my train of thought. What was I, what was I going to say? So uh, the difference between the Ummah and the, uh, the Jews. And, uh, oh, the oh, okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The point I was wanted to make there is, thank you very much, um, is that the, the Jewish intelligentsia, they are intelligent. Okay. Mm. They're very smart. They're very informed. Mm. Okay. You can't say that about the Muslims. Yes, you can. You can't say that. So the you have even the have, Muslim intelligentsia is just copying. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're copying, copying the West. West. They're copying the West. Okay, in, yeah. co in copying so, the West, this is our intellect. So you've um, got a dichot you've got a great dichotomy here. There's a great divide. There's a great division. On one side, you have a bunch of well-informed people serving evil, hmm. and on the other side, you have a bunch of ignoramuses who think they're serving the cause of Allah. Hmm. But when you're ignorant, you can't do that. Because hmm. ignorance only serves evil. Hmm. If you're not informed, you cannot do your best. And if you cannot do your best, you cannot serve the cause of Allah. Subhanallah. All right. That's a spiritually scientific principle. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, there, this is a this is an impasse. You see, there's no solution to this. Mm. There's no solution for this, because uh, the ummah uh, cannot win under these circumstances. This, they, if they go if they go right, they're already outflanked. If they withdraw, they're already uh, encountering the enemy. Everywhere they go, they're encompassed. And mm. this is what Iblis said he will do. He mm. said, I will, I will go be in front of them, behind them, above, behind, on either side. I will encompass them. Right. And Allah said, yes, of course, you have the right to do that. I give you license to do that because I have created the earth so that you can try the hearts of those who say or think they're my servants. Mm. Okay. So if you're operating in this degree of ignorance, how can you be a servant of Allah? <laughs> you can't. I mean, how can the enemy no, be more informed than you and you're representing Allah, who is the all-knowing? <laughs> no, well, you see, they laugh. They laugh. They say, you're, you represent Allah? <laughs> you're joking. You're joking. You represent Allah. <laughs> Do you see Allah? They think Amen. they represent you. <laughs> oh, how stupid can people get? Well, they get very stupid, don't they? Of course they right. do. And then they take and them, in they there. Just keep. And, just, what about that? Do you remember that issue about the prayer that people don't agree with? Can you like say something about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they withdraw to these stupid, foolish issues as if it has some merit. There's no merit in it at all. Your country's starving. You've just lost all your wheat supply because you've stored it all in one place. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, you've got a problem. 
The Muslims have got a problem. It's a big problem. And when they withdraw into this, uh, let, oh, let's just talk about the, the correct way to pray. After 1,400 years, you're still having this conversation. I can't believe it, you know. I can't believe it. After 1,400 years, you still don't know how to pray? Mm -hmm. uh, you can't, you still can't. If you can't agree on that after 1,400 years, you aren't going to win anything okay you're not going to win anything uh, but why do people withdraw to that dear brother why do they withdraw to this position because they have nothing to uh, where, where upon which to is no place to stand upon that is the ground of dignity you mm. see dignity has been removed you remove justice if you're if you're dependent even Khaldun made it very, very clear. This is why the intelligentsia and the Muslims are following the West, because they've lost their autonomy. They've become slaves. And that's what slaves do. And they're happy they, being slaves, it seems. Yeah, well, yeah. They, they, well, it's safer. They're comfortable. Because <laughs> it's, coming out of that is uncomfortable. Yeah, coming, yeah. They're safe being slaves. It's safe. It's a safe place to do. Well, at least I got some place to live. I got a bed. I got something to eat. You know, I've got enough that I can. Well, some of us have enough. We can afford a wife. Mm -hmm. Now, you you know as well as I do, most of your young men cannot afford a wife. Mm -hmm. That's a great injustice, is it not? Yes. Of course it is. And why doesn't the umma? Why doesn't the alim, the ulama, make sure that their young men can afford? To marry? Mm. <laughs> that, that's subject for another conversation, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. So this, this corruption is everywhere, my dear brother, and this kind of stupidity is everywhere. Mm. And because it is stupidity, that is why, and the dignity is not there, that is why people constantly fall back on these vain religious arguments. Mm. Makes them feel self-important, mm. you see? as if they know something, mm. as if they know something that is worthwhile, that has substance. Mm. There's no substance to what they're saying. And they, you know, they, when, whenever the people of Iblis, uh, you know, they get together in their little circles, their little rings of power, and they have, you know, they've got thousands upon thousands of people assigned to keeping the Ummah stupid. And they say, oh, so-and-so over in such and such a place is causing trouble. They think he's some big shot. You look at this guy, Zaik, that you apologized to last month. You know, he's just a troublemaker. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not going to apologize for it. That man is a troublemaker. Mm -hmm. And you have Zionists saying, oh, keep him safe. Keep him making trouble. They'll make sure that he's not arrested. They'll make sure that he gets a visa. They will make sure that he gets passed from hand to hand. Every place that man goes, he causes trouble, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what they do. And what is he causing trouble over? He's causing trouble over things that don't matter. Mm. Yeah, I've listened to him. Oh, we're going to get a lot of feedback on this one now, aren't we? Yeah, <laughs> sure. But let it come. It's on me. It's not on you. It's on me. You see, I'm the one who's saying it. I have license to say it now. <laughs> so they, the enemy will, will, will support people like this, and they will support ignorance. And the Muslims fall further and further into this confirmation bias position. Mm -hmm. You see, you can tell them, look, Vaccines are dangerous, and they'll still go get them. Yeah, you can give them the evidence, and they will still take their children to go get them. Mm -hmm. You can tell them, "Oh no, this COVID thing is a big lie." You can provide them with the evidence, and they will still put the mask on and obey. And this includes your leaders. Yeah. Okay. They're the ones who are supposed to know better. They're the ones who are supposed to stand up and say, no, we're not cooperating with this nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. And you see, the Zionists, they can do this as a block. 
Muslims can't do this any longer because mm. cynicism has taken hold of their hearts and they don't trust their leaders. They don't trust anybody. Mm. You know, they don't trust anybody. There's very, very few people that they can turn to for trust in this hour. Mm. And it seems to me that uh, as I've been uh, growing in this relationship with you, I see I, 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 it looks to me as if more people are beginning to follow your channel. And that is an, that's a good sign because at least you are making an attempt to inform them, okay, of the correct circumstances and the correct way to think about these matters. Mm. See, and you know, you have the courage to bring somebody like me on who's as irreverent as possibly, as, as you could possibly get, you know, on, onto a channel that represents uh, uh, one of the, mm, how shall I say, w w one of the approaches to piety that America has developed amongst the Ummah community, hmm. one of the finest approaches to, to Islamic piety. Hmm. And you had the courage to bring me on, and I'm not the least bit pious in, this, in that respect. My piety is truth. Hmm. If I wear any vestment of piety, it is truth, okay? And I will wear that until I go to my grave. I, and, uh, I think of you as, you know, Allah made you the allergic reaction to <laughs> ritualistic Islam. <laughs> yes, that's a good way to think about it. <laughs> oh, yes, you know. yes. I, I am the pus. <laughs> <laughs> I am the pus coming out, yeah, and that's an expression of truth, you see? Yeah, that's an expression of the body throwing out the evil, hmm. throwing out what is harmful. So, yeah, I accept that. <laughs> I accept that. That's that's good. That's a good way to say it. Yeah. yeah. That's a good and way to say it. We need that. We need an allergic reaction to this ritualism, and we need to bring, alhamdulillah, I'll tell you, uh, I, I can't mention, but uh, somebody, somebody who is uh, has uh, somebody who is uh, r related to some great scholars, great great scholars in the history of Islam. Mm -hmm. One of them actually called me and mm -hmm. uh, talked about uh, me and you and our channel and what we're doing. And uh -huh. it's infiltrating. And this person has madaris. He has many Islamic institutions, uh -huh. and they're they are listening to us now. Oh, very of, good. I'm not saying all of them. Maybe it's one yeah. percent, or maybe one percent. Very good. Very good. But very good. Uh, so, so Alhamdulillah, you know, uh, I I was surprised that such a big name in terms this, of Islamic scholarship uh, was watching a channel like mine. You wouldn't expect that, but it is. It is happening. This is. Uh, he was probably asked by somebody to watch. Uh, because um, uh, this this happens. For example, um, Brother Muhammad Anas Naim just went to organize our uh, our little company in Pakistan to mm -hmm. to to make it legal, right. so that we can uh, publish my works, this sort of thing. And um, he was stopped at the bank. The, he went to pick up his checkbook and he stopped at the bank and said, "Well, the the Sharia Council has to review what what you're going to do." So we need to see what, what it is you're going to publish. And this is under the auspices of the Grand Mufti there, mm. you see. And so uh, he then submitted uh, some of my works, uh, uh, books and recent essays and whatnot, and they were reviewed. And the Mufti gave him the go ahead and told mm. the banker to let him have his checkbook. Mm. Okay. This is, this is, you see, this is going through the proper channels. This is the establishment of divine order, okay? Now, you're not doing this. I'm not doing it. We're not doing it consciously. We're just having a conversation using the media that has been uh, provided for us in our search for truth and in our uh, uh, desire to express that truth mm -hmm. as responsible men, okay? And so this is, a, this is an expression of the warrior spirit and it should be. And meanwhile, you see, behind the scenes and unknown to us, the angels are working. Mm -hmm. you see? 
and then they bring these things to the proper channels and those proper channels then work mm -hmm. their own way mm -hmm. and that then establishes divine order mm -hmm. so that's a, that's a manifestation of grace mm -hmm. okay this is a manifestation of spiritual law at work mm -hmm. you see, in other words what i'm saying is we did not plan this it is allah's plan mm -hmm. it's allah's plan you yes. see so as irreverent as i might be and as a as as a violent re allergic response as i might be you see it is still the plan of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not your plan it's not my plan it is allah's plan alhamdulillah okay and uh, so when I say Alhamdulillah, I really mean it. <laughs> yes, yeah, and on that, you know, one of the verses of the Quran that, that I was taught uh, mm -hmm. by uh, one of my sheikhs, Dr. Isra Ahmed, mm -hmm. there's a verse in the Quran that says, Lays al birra an wujuhakum qibl al mashraqi wal maghrib. It is not righteousness that you turn your faces to the east or the west, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning, uh, he also talked, uh, you know, you're you're like the uh, full explanation of that. But he was talking about, you know, this is this ritualism is not the real substance, right? That's no, just give no. things some shape or form. Mm -hmm. But uh, but nowadays, uh, you know, if somebody's for some reason not, I, I know actually many instances right here in the U.S. where people will not go into a masjid because they think. The masjid is off by five degrees or six degrees to, to the proper qibla. Yeah, this is, this is, this is that's, no that's, issue. That's obsessive compulsiveness. Okay? Yes. yes. That, that's yeah, me so that. this uh, turning to the east and the west, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it may have its place, but it has no place if you're not looking at the spirit of things. If, right? you're, not if, serving, if you're not serving charity, it has no place. Yes. You see? If you're not seeing that the, the needs of the people, the true needs of the people are being met, okay, then all of this turning this way and that, all of these prayers, they're useless, they're meaningless. They, Which they is interesting carry... because in the Quran, charity usually comes before prayers mentioned. Yes, yes. You see, charity is chief. Charity mm. is chief because charity, Allah created the world through charity. Mm. Okay, it was his love, his mm. outpouring of love. Okay, this is and this love, this action. Okay, the kun fire kun went out, the pen recorded, the tablet has the record. You see, then all of these things came to uh, to be because Abba spoke with charity. Mm. Be, 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 serve me serve each other you mm. serve me by serving each other you mm. see so if you're not serving your neighbor if you're not serving your wife if you're not answering to their needs you're not serving the cause of allah mm. all of this religious preoccupation is useless it's helpful but i tell you how it's helpful okay it's helpful only if you want to look at it as uh, like a, a Zen Buddhist would or a um, practitioner of martial arts would. Mm. They would look at their, their rituals, you see, as they prepare themselves to, to perform the correct action. Mm. Okay. Very it, good. Yeah. You see, the prayer so it, is... It, it kind of aligns them with divine order. Yes. But the then prayer, they get stuck right there. They're if not they get stuck to... in the prayer, they don't. They miss the action. You see, they miss the action. They miss the action. Mm. The the Bushido code is all about action, the mm. right action. The Zen Buddhist is all about right action. Mm. All right, and these these people have a discipline which is spiritually and scientifically accurate. Mm. These people are far more reliable than most Muslims on the face of the earth. Mm. I'd rather spend time in their company than with most Muslims I know. Mm. Because most Muslims want to talk about religious vanity. Mm. It's useless. useless. It's a waste of time. Unless you're using it to discipline yourself. 
And if you're using it's also the interesting that Jesus was so anti this, right? He came at a time where yeah. Jews had become so oh yeah thick and they wanted yeah, to Yeah, well, that's Sabbath that's it. That's wanted... exactly what they did. Their ritualism, their legalism and their ritualism prevented men from entering into the kingdom. And the kingdom is the divine action. Action that is serving the cause of Allah, not the cause of your uh, ulema, not the cause of your rabbi, the cause of Allah, hmm. not the cause of the flag, the cause of Allah. Okay, so uh, I is think it, that maybe is, is a is a good hmm. place to stop. But I want to delve on this. I know you know the Bible way better than I do, but I want oh. to delve on this story because, in a sense, it relates a lot to Muslims. From what I remember, there's a passage that talks about, you know, they were, everyone was following the Sabbath, but there were, there was women out in the cold mm. and, uh, and they, you know, they're cold. So Jesus says to his disciples, go give them bread or something like this. Mm. And the rabbis are like, how could you do that? It's <laughs> the Sabbath, you know, you, you can't be like, you know, eating yeah. and, and, and doing these things. Uh, you're supposed to be holding the Sabbath and, and you're helping them break the Sabbath. And he's like, you know, he's, he's, he's trying to talk sense into them in a sense that the law was, you know, that gives you a certain direction, but it, you don't start worshiping the law in a sense. Yes, exactly. Right? Yeah. You don't worship the law. You have to serve your brother. He said, all of the law is, uh, is encapsulated in two Two things. Honor the Lord your God with all your heart. Love the love the Lord your God with all your heart, mm. all your mind, okay, all your strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm. Now, you would not leave yourself out in the cold, would you? Mm. I don't think so. <laughs> so. These are like the primary principles, right? And so yes. when we forget about the primary principles. And we focus yeah. on the smaller principles. This is yeah. another big issue that like, yeah. we don't focus on the bigger principles and we're stuck on the smaller principles. B right? The people so, like, who are... Sophia, for example. Yeah. It's a mosque. It's been a mosque for 600 years. We should leave it a mosque. Uh, but the bigger principles, they are sometimes become blind to that. That, well, we took it away <laughs> from someone before it was a mosque. Well, because you know the principle uh, in Sharia is once it's a mosque, you can't change it. In the Hanafi fiqh, in the other fiqh, you can change it, but in the uh, Hanafi fiqh, it's like you can't change it. Once it's a mosque, that's too bad, no matter what we did. But now that it's a mosque, it has to stay a mosque. <laughs> but you get so stuck in those mind, like the secondary principles, over the the primary principles, right? Uh, well, the is, primary the primary principle would be is that of charity. And if you're going to serve charity, then you re return what belongs uh, to someone who's lost it. Okay. Or yeah, if and you share charity is like the principles of all principle in a sense, right? It's like the mother's yes. principle. When you look at yes. especially the, 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 the previous books along with our book, I can see that. And uh, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Okay. And so, yeah. Um, so I, I really feel I, I hope this new generation of scholars the ones that are uh islamic seminaries or just graduating from islamic seminaries now hopefully they will see things a little differently than their uh, I, i've seen some signs of uh, of hope there amongst a few of my students and uh, uh this, this this fellow uh amir who you you mentioned to me uh he's one of them he's going in the uh the right direction and uh, one of his uh, his friends, uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Mahadi Lak, um, I think you should hook up with him sometime because this is okay. man who's very well informed mm. and uh, would be uh, a great help uh, to you and uh, to your people. Okay. Um, uh, I, I I wouldn't, I, you know, he's probably very busy, but he's he's a very informed man. He's the probably the Mahadi Lak is probably the kind of man I might have become had I been introduced to Islam years and years ago mm. and had the traditional background. Mm. Okay, mm. so you 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 see me. I'm 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 a pretty pretty 
gruff fellow uh, in certain uh, and rough around the edges. But uh, uh, this uh, uh, Sheikh Mahadi Lak is a is a gentleman, and uh, his students are, are are true gentlemen. You see, and when you have this kind of people, they're 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 polished. You see, I wouldn't I, change not... anything about you. Oh well, I am who I am. Okay, I'm just I'm just trying to 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 describe the dif a difference, and uh, Allah loves differences. You see, mm. so if we're all sitting in a circle, Allah would not be disappointed because I'm not like all the others, or all the others aren't like me. We would all be embraced. You see, uh, around this companionship, uh, the, the the company of I like to call it the company of the campfire. Uh, I, I'm putting together my lectures in, a, in, in what I call a series of campfire talks mm -hmm. to try and explain things in a way that uh, I'm trying to bring down the intellectual uh, ideas down to a ground that will provide a, a like a, a, a narrative as if your grandfather was sitting there telling you a story. Okay, you, you know how. Uh, um, uh, oh, never mind. Anyway. I, I think we've made an end here. You better get get back to your uh, uh, your yes. your family uh, business there, and uh, I'll get on with my day, and uh, we'll leave this for another day. I think this is very good <laughs> good yeah, session, yeah, despite <laughs> despite yeah. the interruptions here. Maybe uh, Shaitan tried to play a trick here, but it didn't well, work. Well, maybe I don't know. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <clears throat> Hello?